Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find local verified solar experts, community projects, and heat pump specialists in your area. And by Atmos Financial. Bank better with a financial technology company that is powered by a portfolio of clean energy investments. Welcome back to another episode of TEN, Transport Evolved News. Thanks for joining me. It's been another jam-packed week for all of the wrong reasons, but as always, all of us here at the channel are hopeful the next half hour or so is a little more pleasant. That said, we are starting today's show with some pretty unpleasant news from the US that could affect everyone globally. News of a potential slowdown in the shift to EVs. According to multiple news outlets this week, the Biden administration is said to be planning to ease pre-2030 fuel economy and EV requirements after significant pushback from unions, automakers and, of course, President Biden's opposing candidate in this year's presidential race. While the White House has not confirmed the plans officially, there is some nuance that's important to note in what we do know. Sources close to the White House say the end goal of getting 67% of all new cars and light-duty trucks all electric by 2032 still stands, with no change to the target of dumping fossil fuels. What has changed, however, is the speed of transition, with automakers given extra time in the next few years years to ramp up, with a much more accelerated push towards 2032. I would frankly love to believe the end goal will still happen, but the hundreds of millions of dollars spent lobbying by the fossil fuel industry in just this election cycle suggests otherwise. We have long tried to decode some of the often bizarre naming conventions that automakers use for their vehicles. And if I'm honest, we rarely come up with a good reason for them. But this week, Volvo announced name changes for its XC40 Recharge and C40 Recharge as part of a rebranding of its electric vehicle and hybrid vehicle offerings. Volvo says it hopes that the rebrand will, quote, simplify choice for customers, end quote, and will see the XC40 become the EX40, while the C40 will get an extra letter and become the EC40, both dropping the recharge suffix they currently have have. This means, as of this year, we'll have the EX30, EX40, EC40, EX90 and EM90 made by Volvo as all-electric variants somewhere in the world. Interestingly, too, Volvo will also drop the recharge suffix for its plug-in hybrids, keeping just the T6 and T8 suffix to denote power output. Volvo hasn't said if it'll send out new badges, which sister brand Polestar has done in the past. We might be seeing article after article and <laughs> badly produced AI YouTube video after badly produced AI YouTube video claiming that the EV revolution is over, but sales data most definitely disagrees. This week, data published by the US Department of Energy shows that claims nobody wants to buy EVs are completely bogus, with sales data between 2021 and 2023 showing dramatic growth. What's more, it shows that for the last two years, monthly EV sales over each month, year over year, have set new records, with EV sales in 2023 outpacing every single month of 2022. Market share was also an interesting thing to note with EVs actually exceeding 8% market share by registration at the tail end of last year. It throws a lot of cold water on the notion that EV sales fell last year and proves demonstrably that whoever is saying that has an ulterior motive. Regardless of the narrative surrounding EV sales last year, automakers are continuing to act as if nobody wants EVs anymore, and that's led to some pretty big price cuts across the board. 
The latest to offer a price drop for its vehicles is Ford, which announced price cuts for its Mustang Mark E in Canada by up to 13,000 Canadian dollars and slash prices in the US by up to 8,100 US dollars. The entry level Mark E select rear wheel drive standard range now costs under 40,000 US dollars new, with the extended range premium rear wheel drive going for just under 46,000 US dollars. Meanwhile, the Ford F 150 Lightning has also been given a price cut with up to $12,500 off the F-150 Lightning Platinum and $7,500 off the XLT Extended Range. Rivian posted its quarterly earnings this week, showing that while its year-end figures saw it more than double its vehicle delivery figures year over year, there's still a lot of work to be done. Finishing out 2023, Rivian delivered more than 50,000 R1T and R1S models combined, generating 1.3 billion US dollars in revenue during Q4 for a year end revenue of 4.4 billion US dollars. But while Rivian is still generally trending in the right direction, its gross loss last year was 606 million, far smaller than the more than $1 billion gross loss from the year before, it is still feeling the pinch of production, with its gross margins down to negative 46% for the fourth quarter. As a consequence, it announced it will cut 10% of its workforce to streamline operations. I know some naysayers will cheer at this, but remember, Rivian is ramping up production far more quickly in its life cycle than Tesla did at a similar point in its corporate life. We have had a fair few recall alerts this week, so we've opted to throw them all together in one big story. And we're going to start with the Jaguar I-Pace, which actually had two US recalls. The first one is very small to address poorly fitted bus bars on the battery packs of just two I-Pace EVs to address what Jaguar says is, quote, abnormal resistance in the battery pack. The second recall is to address the possibility of incorrectly repaired battery energy control modules in all model years of I-Pace that were subjected to a prior recall. According to Jaguar, some of the repairs may not have been carried out properly. Meanwhile, Lucid has recalled 189 Lucid Air sedans via an OTA update to address a potential fault in the operating system that could result in a sudden loss of power in affected cars, while Chevrolet has recalled 352 Silverado EVs to address an incorrect seatbelt bezel that could cause damage to the seatbelt during a collision. We have been calling for more affordable EVs for what feels like an age. And while some markets do now have far more accessible models on sale, we're always pleased to hear about new ones. And this week we did, when Dacia confirmed that its spring EV, a car that's been on sale for mainland Europe for some time now, is both getting a mid-cycle refresh and a new market for sales the UK. The refreshed Dacia Spring comes with a 48 kilowatt motor and 26.8 kilowatt hour battery pack, along with a 7 kilowatt onboard charger and 30 kilowatt DC quick charging capabilities. That might feel like it's not a lot, but with a price expected to be about £17,000 sterling, including tax. It's going to be the perfect first EV for plenty of Brits who honestly don't drive very far. I mean, I am British, and before I emigrated to the US, driving anything more than about 100 miles was considered a really long way. Sticking with new vehicles, Volkswagen officially revealed the ID7 Tourer this week, an estate or wagon variant of the ID7 full-size EV. Cross-shopping against the just-announced BMW i5 Tourer, the ID7 Tourer shares the same drivetrain and battery pack as the sedan version of the ID7 and comes with a whole host of standard fit items, including an augmented reality heads-up display. The rear seats lie completely flat, giving a particularly cavernous rear, and there's also a pass-through for the rear seats for long things like skis. We don't have final pricing for all markets yet, but you can bet your 401k that it's unlikely to ever come to the US because, like most automakers, Volkswagen doesn't want people thinking that station wagons are cool. Let them know below if you disagree. 
In launching the Tesla Cybertruck, Tesla and by association Elon Musk were both very keen to promote just how capable Tesla's first pickup was engineered to be. One of the features talked up a lot was the truck's ability to wade through deep water. And with California now experiencing a huge amount of rain in the last few weeks, we only knew it would be time before someone tried to see just how the Cybertruck performs in deep water. This week, we saw the Tex Rex YouTube channel decided to wade through some flood water in a brand new Cybertruck. With the obligatory warning label still dangling from the glove box, they put the suspension to its highest setting, which requires the truck to be in off-road mode, entered wade mode, which pressurizes the battery pack to prevent water ingress, and went for it. I should note that the truck made it fine with only a few pieces of trim dislodged, but Tesla does say off-road driving will void your warranty, so your choice. We often rail against the notion that you need to have off-street parking and charging set up to own an EV, and that's patently false. And we know people who have neither who drive electric. But access to charging at home or near it certainly makes EV ownership easier. And in order to see more people plugging in, we need more governments to support the installation of street-side charging for those without off-street parking. This week, we were very pleased to hear that California. California Assemblyman Kevin McCarty has introduced a new bill called the Equitable EV Charging Act. It aims to make it easier for citizens without off-street parking to apply for and have curbside charging installations made by streamlining the process at both a state and local level. The bill is sponsored by Flow EV and It's Electric and could dramatically increase EV ownership among those who currently live in multi-family dwellings. Bring it on! Short shorts are in a second, but first a word from one of today's video sponsors, Energy Sage. Energy Sage helps homeowners connect with local, verified solar installers across the US and now heat pump specialists in select markets who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing solar panels, help you join a community solar program or get a heat pump installed. I used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our home and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional and knowledgeable and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union that allowed us to finance our own solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. So follow the links below to sign up for either of Energy Sage's free no obligation services and get that ball rolling today. If you choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your project, we will also get a small referral fee, so you'll be helping the channel out too. And as someone whose local utility put up rates by 18% in January, I am very glad that I already have solar. So won't you join me? And now it is time for short shorts. The US federal budget is yet again being held at ransom by extremists and the Republican Party who have told Speaker Johnson this week that they won't support any budget bills that support EVs, reproductive rights, trans health care, refugee rights and all of the other things that they claim are woke and will bring the US to its knees. It's just another day ending in why. In a similar facepalm vein, some Kentucky lawmakers say that allowing EV charging stations to be sited anywhere is anti-competitive to gasoline and that now they demand gas pumps be given the same install anywhere privileges as charging stations. I'm being serious. Hyundai's luxury brand Genesis appears to be backpedaling on its pledge to become an all-electric mark, with Genesis confirming this week that instead of keeping its pledge to make all new models EV or hydrogen by next year, it's now going to start launching hybrids too. Worked Sport has announced a new pickup bed cover designed for the Ford F-150 Lightning. What is different about this one, however, is that it's made up of solar panels and could theoretically provide up to 10 miles of solar powered range per day in ideal conditions. A Volkswagen-owned brand, Scout Motors, has officially broken ground on its first factory. It's based in South Carolina and it will produce Scout's upcoming range of electric SUVs and pickup trucks and promises to produce up to 200,000 vehicles per year. 
Tesla's fight against Swedish union IF Metal is about to get a whole lot worse as the new union joins the fight for fair pay, working conditions and collective bargaining. The new union is the Swedish Union for Service and Communications Employees and that now means that Tesla superchargers won't be serviced or installed during the ongoing dispute. The Supreme Court of the United States has heard oral arguments this week on an attempt to block the EPA's Good Neighbor Air Pollution Rule, which is designed to reduce cross-state pollution from industrial operations. Based on the questions asked by the judges, it looks very likely that the conservative majority will deem the rule unconstitutional. The Ark Boat Company has just unveiled its second all-electric boat in the form of the Ark Sport. Built as a wakeboarding model, it's designed to offer, quote, unprecedented performance, end quote, in the water, but it won't be cheap to buy. California state regulators have suspended Waymo's request to expand its robo-taxi service into parts of San Mateo and Los Angeles counties following concerns from residents surrounding the recent collision between a cyclist and a Waymo vehicle. This suspension could last for up to four months. The British government has confirmed that its plug-in taxi grant programme, which offers up to £6,000 sterling towards the purchase of every new plug-in taxi, will be extended through until the end of April next year. Plug-in hybrid and EVs are both covered. Tesla's plans to expand its Gigafactory facility in Germany has hit a roadblock, namely local opposition. A recent election held in the region saw 71% of local residents turn out to vote, with 65% of those casting votes rejecting Tesla's Giga Berlin proposed expansion. Cupra has launched a new, more powerful version of its Cupra Born hatchback. Called the Cupra Born VZ, it's an all-out performance hot hatch with a 5.7-second sprint time and improved top speed, where legal of course, and pricing will be released shortly. Chinese electric car brand Hi-Fi, which wasn't that well known outside of China and Europe, has confirmed that it stopped production of its vehicles at its factory for six months. That is one heck of a production pause and rumours suggest it may never resume production. The same week that Stellantis confirmed US market production of the Fiat 500e has begun at its production facility, the Fiat 500e has won its first North American award, picking up the 2024 Urban Green Car of the Year prize. We are hoping for a drive very soon. Zika announced this week that it's going to be unveiling a refreshed version of its 001 electric car, next week. We know very little more about the refresh, but the company also let slip that it's built 10,000 Zika 007 sedans in just 60 days. Vinfast is reportedly readying itself for a groundbreaking ceremony in Tamil Nadu, India, where it will establish a new production facility for Indian market EVs. It's all part of a $500 million equivalent investment to produce in India, and it's backed by the Indian government. The SPAC merger between Lotus and L. Caterin Asia Acquisition Corporation is heading into its final stages, with Lotus Technologies now listed on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange this week under the stock ticker LOT. The listing is likely to happen on Friday, which is after we film, but before we publish the show. After temporarily losing its official federal tax credit eligibility back at the start of the year when the federal government changed EV eligibility criteria, the Cadillac Lyric is again eligible for a full seven and a half thousand US dollar federal tax incentive. Unfortunately, though, where dealerships are supposed to be able to apply for the federal tax incentive directly to the point of new cars, some are reporting issues with the automated computer system they're meant to use to do that. Technical issues are apparently ongoing. Carlos Tavares, who's CEO of Stellantis, said this week that he's open to the idea of the company working with a Chinese automaker to license and make Chinese brand EVs for outside of China for the European and US markets. It is a very interesting diversion to the usual feelings towards Chinese OEMs. Just one week after we told you that Germany was leading the transition to commercial electric big rigs and buses in Europe, 
the country has decided to end all subsidy programs for electric semis and city buses. It seems a backward move when there's still much of the market to transition. Hyundai has confirmed that it will be debuting its Ioniq 7 electric SUV in June. Based on the same eGMP platform as the just-launched Kia EV9, we can expect a similar set of specifications in terms of power, range and charging, but with a Hyundai interior and exterior styling. BYD launched a new EV this week called the Chin Plus EV Honor, a vehicle that it says will have an equivalent starting price of 15,000 US dollars and as such will, quote, open a new area of electricity is lower than oil, end quote, in its home market of China. We regularly get pushback from viewers when we dare to suggest that most people don't need an EV with a multi-hundred mile or multi-hundred kilometre range per charge. But this week, data from Recurrent proves the point. Most people drive their EVs no more than 45 miles or 72 kilometres per day. General Motors has promised it will expand the number of roads in North America where its supercruise hands-free semi-autonomous system will operate to 750,000 miles, 1.2 million kilometres, which is double its current coverage network, by sometime next year. New data from TrueCar shows that while some EVs are keeping their values pretty well, three in particular, the Toyota BZ4X, the Lexus RZ450 and the Subaru Solterra, all of which are basically the same car, are depreciating at a rate of more than 32% in a single year. Seattle has confirmed it will become the first U.S. city to deploy brand new Dennis Environ 500 EV double-decker buses, complete with 300 kilowatt in-ground inductive charging. We should see them on the road later this year or sometime early next. After getting a terrible review at the hands of MKBHD on YouTube and having an official NHTSA investigation started into reports of unintended vehicle movement or runaway, Fisker was warned this week that it faces delisting on the Nasdaq stock exchange because of its terrible share price. Two major tier one part suppliers to the auto industry, Continental and Forvia, have both announced job cuts this week caused by changes in EV priorities. Continental will lay off just over 7,000 staff, while Forvia has warned up to 10,000 staff may be laid off. In an ongoing joke that Tesla's auto wipers are absolutely terrible, and many people have surmised it's because Tesla was based in California and now in Texas, well, They've had rain. So after California has been deluged with rain for weeks, Tesla has confirmed an auto wiper update is coming soon. I don't think it's a consequence. We love it when people get down and nerdy with their EVs. And this week, it was the turn of a Rivian R1T owner who figured out that it's possible to get the Rivian R1T and R1S to play movies on its centre touchscreen using the GearGuard playback functionality and a USB stick. Speaking at an investor conference this week, Mary Barra, the CEO of General Motors, confirmed that GM, despite having a disappointing EV production year last year, is still all in on going electric by 2035. This is despite GM's recent announcement that it's going to start making plug-in hybrids again, which means that those two statements don't seem to mesh, not with the time left. What also doesn't mesh although is in fact entirely believable, is that the report that Shell's carbon capture plant in Alberta, Canada, is actually responsible for emitting more greenhouse gases than it is supposed to be capturing. It's basically trading CO2 for methane, which is even worse for the planet than CO2. Ford seemingly leaked details of its CCS to J3400 adapter this week online when its parts store listed the adapter for a short while. We reached out to Ford to ask, but haven't heard anything back at the time of filming. And no, this video isn't Ford's adapter, it's of a third party one we've been testing. Mercedes-Benz is reportedly backtracking its EV plans, forgetting about its pledge to go all electric by 2030 and instead noting that it will continue to produce gasoline-powered vehicles well into the next decade. I'm honestly not sure why we make this show anymore. And finally, for the short shorts, while you might be aware of Mercedes-Benz special sand jumping mode, which is designed to get its vehicles out of sand, uh, Naya went one step further this week to showcase its ET9 electric SUV shaking itself free of snow, just like a dog because of its chassis control system. And given I had to say goodbye to our wonderful Labrador River song this week, just shy of her 12th birthday, I figured 
that that video would be a good end to the short shorts and what has been a very, 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 very disappointing and trying week for us. Keep chasing those little balls, girl. You're the best little girl. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Our final two stories are next, but first a quick word from one of today's video sponsors, Atmos Financial. Imagine a bank where your savings not only grow, but also go towards growing a greener world. That is exactly what Atmos Financial can offer you. With Atmos, every dollar in your checking and savings account is funding projects that light up lives with solar energy rather than fossil fuels. Atmos is banking that builds a better tomorrow with every swipe of your card because they're committed to investing in 100% clean, equitable and sustainable progress. With a 3.5% savings rate and a mobile app, your finances and the climate can go hand in hand. It charges no monthly fees and there are no minimums keeping you awake at night and it offers accessible solar loans for those who want to give the fossil fuel industry the ultimate middle finger. By joining Atmos using the link below, you're not only choosing a smarter way to bank, you're planting seeds for a healthier earth. And every sign up supports this channel so we can keep bringing you the content you love. I am personally a customer and I love knowing that I'm helping save money while making sure that money doesn't end up funding the fossil fuel industry. And now it's time for those last two stories. As recent years will attest, we're seeing more and more extreme weather events around the world, leaving more and more people displaced as a consequence. Rebuilding communities after a natural disaster or a climate change caused weather event can cost a lot of money and many ravaged communities can barely afford to rebuild, let alone think about resiliency and future planning. But this week, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA for short in the US, announced that it will work with local governments across the nation to help fund and install efficient home appliances, heating systems, solar panels and backup systems as part of the rebuilding efforts that can take place after every major disaster. It is a truly fantastic move that will not only ensure communities can rebuild, but rebuild in a more energy efficient and energy resilient way, which will ultimately mean they have to rely less on outside help in the future. And finally, sometimes the news stories we see crossing our collective desks are predictable and sometimes they're just very very weird indeed, and our last story fits into the latter. Way back when, now convicted fraudster Trevor Milton was still in charge of Nikola Motors, the company promised to bring an all-electric pickup truck to market called the Badger. But after the company's finances started to look less and less rosy, and federal investigations began, and its potential partnership with GM fell through, the Nikola Badger was seemingly abandoned. Now, however, David Sparks, a.k.a. Heavy D Sparks from Discovery Channel show Diesel Brothers, claims that the truck is coming back to market. According to the TV celebrity, he made a deal with Trevor Milton before Milton's conviction that saw him gain ownership of all of the Badger IP. And after three years, he says it's ready to become a reality. As Electrek noted, however, Mr. Sparks also says Trevor Milton is innocent of the crimes he's now serving jail time for. So... Take from that what you will. And on that note, we are in fact done for today. As always, a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean, green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. You can find out more by heading to electricauto.org. And thanks to Energy Sage. Follow the link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make the step towards energy self-sufficiency through solar on the roof of your home, joining a community solar project or by getting a heat pump installed. And thanks to Atmos Financial. Bank better by following the link below. 
as usual. We would love it if you'd consider supporting us from just $1 a month on Patreon or about $10.08 per year. The overwhelming majority of our income now comes from Patreon support and it's thanks to all of you that I'm able to pay the team and make sure that everyone gets good health care. We've got some big expenses coming up this year though so if you'd like to help lighten the load do follow the links below, book myself or Kate for a personal one-on-one -on -one consulting session, a full-blown presentation for your community group or even a company consulting session. And don't forget to visit our swag store for our new design this month, End Charging Deserts. It, along with the rest of our merch, is there for all of your TE swag needs. And of course, we will be back next week as usual with content going out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And you can join us on Tuesday for a live stream at 1pm Pacific as we talk about the month's EV news and more with the lovely Kate Walton Elliott. I'll link to the live stream below. And also check out my first drive review of the Honda that we just drove last week, the Honda Prologue. It was a very, very good drive. Just as a reminder though, if you are in a group currently feeling the full force brunt of hate at the hands of legislators who do not want you to exist, just know that you are not alone. You're valid, you're loved, and you're freaking awesome because you're watching this show and you're you. So until next time, Stay awesome, stay safe regardless of your identity or who you love, be an amazing ally, be kind and please, for the sake of everyone and the planet, keep evolving.